It's probably a safe bet to say the Hulk is a great gardener. After all, he has a green thumb. Whether you come for the jokes and stay for the books, or vice versa, I'm happy that you're here for this comic book editions video today, and I welcome you. Today I don't have a lot of books to show you, but I have some cool things, including a graded comic book. I don't buy slabs very often, so when I have one of those to show you, I think it always makes it a little more extra special. There are some common themes to the books that you're going to see in today's comic book editions video. You're going to see all Marvel books. You're going to see all cover by books. I bought them all based off of the cover. They're all modern books as well. I have books all from unknown comic books to share today. One from their recent Labor Day sale, the other from a previous sale that finally arrived to me. More details on that later in the video, plus new subscriber shout outs coming. Those are long overdue and they return in this video. Let's get started. This is the Iron Man Hellcat Annual, issue number one, and this is an Unknown Comics exclusive, a Virgin exclusive of the Ivan Tao cover. Hopefully I pronounced his last name correctly. So this book was released at the end of July, and I was like, oh wow, Iron Man and Hellcat, I guess are a couple. I didn't know that. Or at least they were a couple from what I gathered from reading the story. Then I'm like, I didn't know that Iron Man and Hellcat had their own book. Then I'm like, oh, that's the Iron Cat book. So imagine my surprise when I found out that the Iron Cat book is actually Iron Man and Black Cat. You need to help a brother out in the comment section because I have been totally confused on what's going on. I wasn't confused about this cover. Loved it. From the very first time that I saw this on the Unknown Comics website, I'm like, Oh, wow, that's a cover. I'm like, I would really like that. Now, the story itself isn't one I think I would rush back out to reread again sometime soon in the future. I've been a fan of Patsy Walker Hellcat, uh, or, or just maybe even the costume, I could say, because I love the cat, the original cat series with this costume. Of course, she became Tigra. And then in an Avengers comic book, Patsy Walker ended up gaining the costume and the powers that are associated with it and became Hellcat. And I love Hellcat and those Avengers and Defenders appearances. I always try to work on my run of Defenders comic books that has Hellcat in it because I like the character so much. But in this issue, they actually allude a little bit to the Patsy Walker old comic books before she became a superhero. And, uh, you know, they, they talk about her being a, a teen idol. And she's like, well, you know, my mother made up most of those stories, right? So I like that little bit of a nod that they gave to the original comic book in this issue. So help a brother out and let me know, okay, what's the deal here? What was the deal with Iron Man and Hellcat, Iron Man and Black Cat? I literally was shocked to find out that Iron Cat is not a Hellcat Iron Man comic book. So you got to fill the brother in and let him know what's been going on with those two characters. That's a pairing I don't necessarily... I wouldn't see coming, but when I think about it, I'm like, yeah, I could see that pairing work a little bit, Tony Stark and Patsy Walker. So this is the book that kicks off our comic book editions video today, the Unknown Comics exclusive. So up next, I'm going to show you the book that prompted me to purchase from their Labor Day sale, which was a great sale. But when I saw this book and the price they had on it, bingo, I'm buying this is Hulk, and I believe this is volume four, issue number one. So Donny Cates wrote this. Ryan Otley did the artwork on this. I have heard a lot of people rave about the Donny Cates run on Hulk. And this is the first time I've read any of it. But from this issue alone, I could see why people were raving about it. It's really good. The artwork's good, too. The Ryan Otley artwork is really good. But I like how they kind of made... Bruce Banner more of a menace than the actual Hulk and, the, and that kind of interpretation on that. So I might try to get caught up a little bit to see what's going on in this run, but just based on one issue alone and usually the first issue, you know, setting up the new story and everything is kind of slow. I didn't find that with this at all. This is the one in 100 hidden gem incentive. I love hidden gem covers and you're going to see another one in this video too. 
And this one was done by Herb Trimpey. The very first time I saw this, you know, almost a year ago when it was released, I was like, oh, look at that. I would love to own that. And now I do own a copy. Correction, now I do own two copies. Yeah, I ended up buying a second copy. This is one I'll probably just hold on to for a while and maybe I'll flip it and end up getting a book that I want. Or who knows, it might end up as an AOK -okay or a prize win on my channel sometime. I'm not sure the status of the second copy, but this one copy is staying in my collection for sure. I've seen other people in the YouTube community have this book, especially I remember watching Nosh Head and his live feed. And I think he had has, or at least had, two copies of, of the book as well of this cover. And when it first came out, you know, it was selling in the $100 range and the price has gone down a little bit, maybe 70, 75, but even that I'm like, I just don't think I wanna spend that much just on a strict cover buy. But the price really went down for this unknown comic sale so much that I couldn't bypass it. And I'm glad I didn't. The only thing that I think that would make this cover even more special would be if Lou Ferrigno signed it. Imagine this signed either in a green or purple Sharpie by Lou Ferrigno. That would be pretty awesome. I'm kind of hearing though that Lou Ferrigno's prices are pretty high for an autograph. I met him like 20 years ago at a Wizard World convention in Chicago. So he was at the Wizard World Madison convention, uh, the last one that they had pre-COVID that I went to. But... I didn't meet him, I had already met him, already had the autograph, but I wouldn't mind, you know, maybe getting this and, of course, get it CGC graded then, too, with the verification on it. I mean, as I, as I keep saying this, you know, the ka dollar signs keep going up and up and up, but I don't know if I'll end up doing it, but it is a possibility. It's one that I would consider for this cover because I think that would enhance it even more. Yeah, I love, love, love this cover. And another thing that I love so much about the hidden gems, they truly are what, what they say, they are hidden gems. They're artwork that you don't see very much and I've never seen this image before. So the next book is another hidden gem cover that I'm adding to my collection that I've wanted since it was released. It's Spider Woman number one from about two years ago from the most recent volume, volume number seven, I believe. Now I do have a copy of Spider Woman number one, a different cover of this. So I've read the story and I wasn't real big on the story, but they had so many awesome covers. This hidden gem cover is a one in 100 incentive ratio Carmine Infantino. And I've never seen this image before. It certainly reminds me of the old Spider Woman cartoon from like 80 or 81, which by the way, it only lasted one season. And that season is streaming, I think on Disney Plus. You should watch that sometime if you've never seen it. Joan Van Ark from Knott's Landing fame does the voice of Spider-Woman in that cartoon. Um, yeah, this cover really reminds me of, of that era, that style. And I wish the cartoon had had more than one season. She did a little thing when Jessica Drew would turn in from Jessica Drew to Spider-Woman. That was kind of like the Wonder Woman spin that Linda Carter did on the TV show. And I always loved that too. This series, though, the, the, the number ones for Spider-Woman, issue one from volume seven, there were so many variants. And this one in 100 wasn't even the highest incentive ratio. There was like a crazy like one in 300 art germ or something like that. And it was a beautiful image, but I'm like, I'm not even going to attempt to try to get that. What I would like to get, and maybe I will, maybe I, you never know. There are two different Alex Ross variants for this cover that he was selling, I think, through his site. And I think they're all sold out on the site now, but you check eBay and places like that. One was just of her alone, uh, and I think she was flying, and the other one was her and Spider-Man on the cover. I would love to get those two variants to add into my collection sometime. That would be pretty awesome to have. We'll see if it happens. But in the meantime, these are the four books that I picked up from the recent Unknown Comics Labor Day sale. Before I share with you the graded comic book that I also bought from Unknown Comics, I want to give a long overdue new subscriber shout out going on to some new and recent subscribers to my channel. So I say salute and I thank you for being new and recent subscribers. They include the Corporate Law Group, Ignacio Di Miglio, Art of Alan Shell, Bottom Tier Collector, Trev the Shipping Guru, and son of a Bruce, Chris at Retro Rocket. 
Thank you all for being new and recent subscribers to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. Special shout out to those new subscribers that came from some recent guest appearance. I was invited on a few other channels, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. Silver Haired Bronze Age Babe had me on a live dive talking about the character Nubia. And then Gary B, the casual comic guy, had me on the 1011 program with Metarog co hosting. I had so much fun on both programs. If you miss them, they're archived in the collaborations folder on my YouTube channel, so you can check them out there. But thank you to those new subscribers that came from my appearances on those channels. As I said at the beginning of the video, I don't buy a lot of graded books all the time, but it was July of last year that I thought, you know, I want to get some more graded comic books, I think, into my collection. Maybe I should start pre-ordering. So that's exactly what I did. And the book that I chose to get is finally here. It's X-Men, The Trial of Magneto, issue number one. This is the beautiful Mark Brooks variant for it. And my friend Kenny, ComicHead84, said it best when he said that Mark Brooks knows how to draw cape fabric. This cover is gorgeous. I love it. I've read the book digitally and I have the rest of the series. Now as John's Comics with Kids has said, and I do agree with him, the story so much wasn't like about the trial, so to speak, of Magneto. Actually, it was much more of a Scarlet Witch story. But I have the full run of them. This is the only one that I have slabbed. I have some of the other covers that were Unknown Comics exclusives for this series. I think they had exclusive covers um, for issues 1, 2, and 3, but they didn't end up having exclusive covers for issue 4 and 5, which kind of surprised me. But getting back to the timetable, if you're wondering how long it takes to get a graded comic book back, it was July of last year, July 2021, that I pre-ordered this book. The book released in mid-August of 2021 and then immediately was sent to CGC for grading. It was guaranteed to come back as a 9.8. It took 51 weeks from the time the comic book was released until it finally ended up back in my hands and into my possession. Wow. I'd say they're backed up. It's worth it, though, to have in here. Um, I just can't rave about this cover enough. I have the book as well. The X Factor issue, I think I bought either early this year or last year from Unknown Comics, their exclusive cover to it, where the events of that led into this miniseries, The Trial of Magneto. So, a little bit Marvel in my collection here, and another slab. You know, I wouldn't rule out ordering or pre-ordering some more slabs. As a matter of fact, there's one that's about to release in November that I have my eye on as a potential pre-order as well. So we'll see if I end up pulling the trigger on that or not. But by sharing this, we come to the end of today's Comic Book Editions video. If you're new to my channel and haven't subscribed yet, I hope you take this opportunity to do so. Hitting the notification bell instantly informs you when new content is added. Sharing this video or sharing this channel with someone that you think might be interested is another great way to show support. Leave me a comment below. I'd love to know if you have any of these books in your collection, if you're wanting any of these, which your favorite cover was out of all the ones I shared today. Drop me a note and we can dialogue about all of that stuff in the comment section below. Thank you again for making it to the end of this Comic Book Editions video. It means the world to me, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Take care.